welcome to the Cap Guy Show, starring JT and the Cap Guy. Now here's the Cap Guy. Morning, folks. Hi out there. Uh, should I do the romper room song? No, don't do the romper room song. Well, I am a doobie. <laughs> yeah, you're a doobie, all right. And, and not a Doobie Brother. Although, I like the music. Yeah, I like the Doobie Brothers too. Yeah. It just... Yeah. Minute by minute by minute by... JT. Well, Huffy Puffy. Hey, I see you found a hat to fit. What's on it? Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Your team. Okay. Well... Well, that won't last long. It's almost, it'll be football season as soon as April starts and they start playing. You don't have no faith in my Rangers? Do you? <laughs> All right, maybe not. Uh, they made it to the World Series twice uh, and they lost. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. Uh, but you are loyal to your team. Anyway. Hey, uh, what do you call a boomerang that don't come back? I don't know. What do you call a boomerang that don't come back? A stick, silly. A stick. He's, you know, that, yeah, never mind. Anyway. Uh, 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 what'd the little light bulb say to his mom? Uh, we're doing jokes now. Uh, yeah, just, you can talk afterwards. Just finish the joke. What'd the light, little light bulb say to his mom? <laughs> I don't know. What did the little light bulb say to his mom? I love you, Watts and Watts. <laughs> you better be laughing. Anyway. Uh, yeah, more sales. More sales. Ching, ching, ching. Yeah, let's, you're going to get old with them, right? Yeah. And then we're going to discuss a couple of things that viewers asked to hear about. One is, how do we determine the cost of shipping? Okay, we're going to do that. And a live example. And then, where do you get some of these things you use, like the lights and the the head for your caps and all that good stuff. So let's, I guess we're going to get on with the show, aren't we? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, we're going to get on with the show. Just chill out, just chill, chillaxing. I'm just chillaxing. Yeah. That it? Yeah, okay, you chillaxing now? Yeah, I'm calmed down. All right. Now we can get on with the show. All right, folks, we'll get on with the show. It's time for the Cap Guy Show, starring the Cap Guy over here and me. I'm JT. And, uh, yeah, let's get on with it. You know what to do. Talk to you later. Uh, yeah. Jokes again. You just never know when the jokes are coming, do you? Oh, I'm going to get rid of this, though. Uh, if I can find a place to put it. Yeah, uh, first I want to say thank you, Karen, for all your help yesterday. She, uh, Went through my, well, we went to Lowe's and bought tubs, the long, double, well, 32 quart type deals, to, uh, plastic totes, and they ain't cheap, folks. Uh, spent $110 on six of them, but it did the job and uh, had to reorganize the caps. And they're basically, instead of being stacked too high and big, big totes, tub totes, whatever you want to call them, the big ones. Um, they're long and they're just enough for the caps and the lid, but they're two side by side and they go back and they fill the totes. And of course the blue and the black ones took two each, uh, because I have so many of the blue and black and, uh, anyway, yeah. So she went through and sorted them and they're alphabetized and everything else. Of course, when the cap guy gets to digging, you know how that'll end up, that'll end up not good. But anyway, I appreciate the help. She spent a lot of time on it and. There you go. And now I ran across this corduroy cap. I can't believe it hadn't sold. This is a, it's got the USA hockey bear. There are some, this is also Ralph Lauren Polo, by the way. There are some of these that are very valuable over a hundred dollars. This one in particular is not, I did find it at the bin. So that's a good thing. Um, I find a lot of Ralph Lauren. So for some reason down at the bins, but rarely one of these, um, I decided to pull it and keep it. I had it for like $23. It had no, nobody had ever bid on it. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to go out and recomp that thing. And I did. And they're all over the place. Anywhere from 
13 to 29 dollars and i like the hat so guess what i'm keeping it Guess what i need another cap right and um don't forget i want to remind everybody today is march 1st and then you probably knew that part but uh guess what it's ebay coupon time nope wait a minute cap badge wrong it ain't ebay coupon time take two <laughs> it's we got another month we got another month. We got to get through March. Never mind. Strike that from the record, please. Anyway, it's early. And uh, I'm going to get into what sold. But before I do that, um, I'm going to discuss first. Uh, Gwendolyn asked to know about where I get my lighting and where I get uh, the hat or the, uh, the, the wig stand or the head. In this case, and I'm gonna grab it, it's heavy. I used to use styrofoam heads, but when you're doing the caps that I do, a lot of times if it's a heavier cap, they fall over a lot, but you can get those anywhere, thrift stores, Walmart, uh, hair styling places, and they're very cheap. But you wanna get something that's got a little bit of weight to it so the, so the head just don't fall over. Now I got lucky with this one. This is from Pier One Imports. And I actually found this at a yard sale and paid, I don't think I paid more than $5 for it, but I didn't even realize how much it was worth because I had my intention was to use this glass head. Um, these are 60 to to $100 used. And some of these like this one could go for 200 brand new, but I don't know how you'd know the difference because you can't tear it up other than break it. Don't drop it, cap guy. Um, but yeah. Those are kind of expensive, and if you're going to do a lot of caps, I would suggest getting a really quality one. But Amazon and eBay have tons of wig heads, is, is what I would look under. Um, and I would say get something that's, you're going to spend about $30 or $40 probably for a really good one that, maybe not glass, but but is solid. Because like I said, unless you take down that, head, that uh, styrofoam head somewhere um, to a place where you're taking just those pictures, that, that would be the cheap way to do it. Um, but uh, anyway, there you go. And as far as lights go, they're a dime a dozen. Um, I find them on uh, yard sales and stuff. And then again, this one here that you saw in my video yesterday, it's just a little cheap one that you can adjust the light up and down. There's a knob and there's a switch and it's got numbers on it. But these, woo. Excuse me, can I see your driver's license, ma'am? Okay, there you go. Anyway, get a ticket. But uh, this is on a little tripod, and I use this one. Um, I do have some I found at yard sales that are little mini ring lights. And then the other one that I use over here, I'm gonna try to get this around my packages. Um, I'm gonna turn it on. This one I found at a yard sale as well. It's a little ring light, and at the top, it has a magnifier on it, so I can. it's flexible. I can bend it up and down, but again, I found it at a yard sale. The ring light back here with the hat on it, I got that off of Amazon, and typically you're going to pay about $30, $35. For the smaller stuff, it's going to be in that $20 to $30 range. You can get more extravagant, but again, I think the biggest part, you know, if you're, if you're going to really want to get uh, the word I'm looking for without using the word anal, but I mean... It, I take them and I'm fine with my pictures. Some people are very particular. They don't want shadows. I'm not doing photography here. I'm not filming your kids. I'm filming items to sell on eBay and you can agree or disagree, comment below. But I use a tri-fold cardboard backing I get from Dollar General for about three or $4. And then poster board that I replace because it does get dirty, 50 cents to a dollar, a dollar tree. And I would just put that on the bottom and I put the item in there and I take my pictures. I hang it off the top of the trifold if it's a shirt or a coat. I keep a hanger that's kind of clear and transparent so it doesn't show that. But um, yeah, I mean, you can do all this inexpensively. And then uh, if you want to put the investment in, uh, you can get fancier and fancier. Uh, the only negative to the glass head, going back to that, is sometimes if the caps are oversized and they're a fitted cap, 
they'll slide a little bit so you can put something to just, you know, a piece of tape or something inside the hat just for a second to uh, make it stick and stay where you want it while you're rotating the head. Because I rotate the head as I'm taking the pictures because I take so many of them. But uh, anyway, I hope that helped. Um, they're just, they're everywhere. And if you order it on Amazon, you're going to get it quick. But um, I would suggest that when you're out this summer, spring, summer, yard sales, etc. So anyway, I'm going to get on with what I sold. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about shipping. All right. Let's get into the sales. Um, these are Coca-Cola glasses. I've sold a bunch of these. I had them in white. I didn't have as many in white, but I've had them in white and red. Paid $2 a piece at a thrift store for these. I bought them all. And um, as you can see, they're new in the package. I have seven left. I've sold four of the red. I'm out of the white, like I said. And I sent an offer, $17.99, free shipping. And I will pop up my profit. The next is a really cool little hat. Jeep hair, don't care. If you have a Jeep or you've owned a Jeep, you understand. When I lived in Arizona, I had a white Jeep Wrangler and I loved it. But in Arizona, when the top's down and you're sitting at a light and it's 115, you just feel your head baking. So there you go. I don't know if I believe it then, but yeah, Jeeps are awesome and Arizona has a ton of them. And uh, Hawaii does as well. Great outdoor running car, but they are not gas efficient. And they are definitely uh, don't have the power of a normal vehicle. Uh, that square front doesn't doesn't help in the wind. But anyway, it did look good going down the road. But other than that, I I, I mean, anyway, I'll let you form your own opinion. Jeep ball cap paid eighteen cents at the bins. Actually, I paid a dollar for this at a yard sale. I just looked it up. Sold it for twelve fifty plus shipping, and I'll pop up my profit. The next are Miss Me skinny distressed jeans. The more bling, and somebody was talking in a Facebook group today about Miss Me jeans, should they buy them? My suggestion is you find them for $5 or less, you buy them. Anything above that, I would not buy them. Now, there are some that are more blingy than others, and the blingier ones still sell, but these have passed their, I guess, valued time. People don't wear them as much as they used to. Um, I paid seven for this pair back when I was buying a lot of clothes and jeans. I have four pair of Miss Me either jeans or shorts left. And again, I won't pick them up again unless they're cheap. Uh, I had this in my 15% off sale at $19.55. Saw a watcher, threw out an offer of $18.55. They took it. And again, these are 14 skinnies. Um, they are in really good condition for distressed jeans, of course. And plus shipping, I got those in a flat rate, made a little on the shipping, and I'll pop up my profit. The next is a lot of 150 plus $19.96 Yu-Gi-Oh cards with a 10 and I separated them by colors. Uh, I paid $10 for this 10 and uh, I've had them on there for a little while. I got them back in, I think, uh, November. And um, some of them are pretty, you know, they're, they're played with, let's just say it that way. Some are bent more than others. I don't know if there's any home runs. I never looked these ones up. And uh, a 10 into $59, I'll take it all day long plus shipping and uh, I'll pop up my profit. The next are Born, B-O-R-N, sandals. And I picked these up for $2.67 at a thrift store. They are in good shape. And it's about that time when sandals are going to start popping and selling. And Born's one of the good names. These are in pretty good shape. So, uh, again, women's leather. They're size 9. I paid uh, two sixty seven. I sold these for, you know what? I take that back. I was looking at the wrong thing. I paid three dollars for these, and I sold them for fifteen twenty. Uh, again, I sent out an offer. So send those offers. Those also went in a flat rate, and I made a little bit, and I'll pop up my profit. The next is Micro Machines, another Sega Genesis game gone. I actually got some offers from somebody overseas for thirty dollars for this, and I did not want to take it. It has a little bit of value, um, and I stuck at 40 and I finally sold it at 40 And the reason is the condition of these games, being one-owner games, with their original cases, manuals, everything, no blemish on any of the items, like especially the cartridges you can see here. There, there are no fading, no peeling, no dirt or writing on them. They are really nice. 
and this lady took care of her own stuff. Um, I paid two seventy five dollars for this. I sold it for $40 plus shipping, and I will pop up my profit. And the last thing I've sold so far tonight, Michigan Wolverines. I've had this since September of 2018. It is a very nice jersey. I'm shocked it hasn't sold before. It is reversible, as you can see. And um, the picture's wrong because when I was doing this, this is when I was doing it with my camera, and the date was <laughs> not set on the camera. So, uh, wow. Yeah, I've had this thing for a long time. And, um, again, I think I paid about 5 bucks for this. I don't even remember it's been so long. And I sold it for $12.99 plus shipping, flat rate envelope as well, went priority. Uh, it is a big jersey, even though it's a large. And um, it is by Team Edition Apparel, so not your Nike or Adidas or anything like that. But uh, I'll pop up my profit, and I'll get back with you if I have any more sales before the evening's over. Talk to you in a little bit. All right, welcome back. Um, on shipping, first of all, what you're going to need and determine all this, of course, you're going to need to get a scale. And, and again, I ordered mine on Amazon. It's a really nice scale. Less than 50 bucks. You can get them cheaper. Uh, Walmart, etc., for 25 or so. Um, but you want it to, to go up to a decent amount of weight, 30 pounds or so. And um, uh, mine has ounces and, and all that. Um, I'll show it to you. There you go. I've got it on a desk. It's got a scale. I can measure it in kilograms or I can measure it in ounces. And I paid about $35, $40 for that on Amazon. All right, there are breaks. I mean, anything over a pound is priority, so I would suggest trying to use USPS supplies for those things um, because you get a lot of the flat rate stuff. I would say out of the priority boxes, I use typically uh, number sevens, which is a 12 by 12 by eight box. I use those quite a bit. I use 1092s and 1094s for flat things like board games, puzzles, uh, sometimes clothing, uh, bigger, you know, items. Um, if they get clothing gets too big, I go to a 12 by 12 by eight or even a shoe box. Shoe boxes are something if you're shipping shoes, um, anything under about a size eight, eight and a half, I'm going to ship in a flat rate padded mailer, uh, USPS. And again, those are all priority products. They're all free on USPS.com. You have to register and you can order as much as you want or as often as you want, but they do have limits on how many items because uh, the post office does a stock a lot of this stuff. Um, 1095s are really good for board games. Stay away from the flat rate board game box because it's about 20 bucks by itself. And a lot of times you can ship a board game for about 12 bucks. Um, I use a lot of the padded flat rate envelopes, which I mentioned, and flat rate envelopes, which are the cardboard ones. And I would say I use um, uh, the tubes because I ship bats and you can use those to ship golf clubs. When you're using tubes, remember on one side is priority and one side is express mail. Express mail does not need to be on the outside of that package unless you're using that service because if you accidentally do that, you're gonna get charged an exorbitant amount of money to ship that item. Um, and uh, make sure you cut the box down to fit whatever item it is. So if a bat is 36 inches, anything over 36 inches, the, the price is going to jump quite a bit because everything that USPS does, FedEx, UPS, is dimensional weight. And it's length, width, and height. Um, the, girth, the total girth of the package and the weight is all factored in, and they come up with a cubic foot measurement. So you want to be careful um, and cut those boxes down. I try to keep mine under 36 inches and I have got burned a couple times when they went to like 41 and I didn't figure it in my calculated price. So um, they can really jump on you. So be careful with that. Um, I would say those are the main things that I use. I use a lot of A's too. Regional A's and B's are also flat rate and the medium flat rate box I used to use quite a bit, but if I can get it in a regional A, it's cheaper than a, uh, a medium, but I have shipped stuff in mediums that weighed 50 pounds. Um, it's whatever you can get in that box, and it's a small box, but if it's a heavy item like a dumbbells or something, you can get it in there. You can ship it for about $14. Now remember, shipping on eBay is gonna get you discounts. I catch resellers all the time at the post office 
paying at the post office. I ask them why they're doing it, and they never have a really good reason as to why they're doing it, and I inform them in front of the employees, you're losing money by doing this. I mean, if you're charging the customer, I'm surprised you have the sales for that. But you do get discounts, so you need to be shipping on eBay instead of taking them to the post office and shipping them from there because uh, you're, you're losing money on your shipping. And uh, I do make sometimes a little bit on the shipping, and sometimes I lose a little bit on the shipping. And that's why I am transparent with my videos when I tell you I messed up and I lost on the shipping because I didn't think about it when I was doing it. But it's typically the longer items are not weighing everything. And some things you'll get down like video games and caps, you kind of know uh, what they're going to weigh. But I'm going to show you, I, uh, this is the last sale that I had last night. It is a Wrangler Youth Large 10 to 12 uh, Western shirt. And it's got Wrangler on the sleeve. It's kind of a rodeo type shirt that the Cowboys wear when they're rodeo and with their with their uh, logos on them and stuff. And of course, nowadays they have more advertising than, than NASCAR does on their clothing. But uh, anyway, I sold this for 10.62. I bought it a long time ago. I'm trying to get out of the Western and dress shirt, Ralph Lauren Polo, Lacoste, all that type of stuff. But I did sell it for 10.62, and I believe I had about five dollars invested in this, somewhere between three and five. So. I'm gonna show you how I would ship this. I already know the weight of it. Um, it weighs seven ounces and it'll go in a poly bag. So that's first class. And in first class, there are breaks in the weights. And that's, I mean, you can't get around it, but if it goes over a pound, use, use one of the flat rate type situations. Um, you need to learn about those by listening and and, uh, and doing a little bit of research. And you can always, when you have an item to ship, you can play with it, and I'm gonna show you that right now. All right, I'm in my shipping. I have two items to ship, one sold this morning, so I will not be ship. I will be shipping it, but it won't be showing it because it's gonna be in tomorrow's video. So when you pull up the ship your order on eBay, basically you're gonna enter the weight. So you have options here on custom size, uh, your first class, and so, I had the, if I change this to seven ounces, and it's gonna be about a three by nine by 11 poly bag, and I hit enter, and down here, it's gonna show me, I'm gonna to try to back out so you can see this better. 351 is what it's gonna cost me to ship it with my discount, um, and uh, that's first class. Now, if I had made that, and I'm gonna change this, there's a break at four ounces. So if I had this at four and I had the same measurements, and now you're gonna see that it was 306. So there's a break at four ounces. There's another one at eight. So eight would be the same as seven. So anything five, six, seven, I believe uh, eight's gonna be there too. There you go, 351, okay? Now if that goes to nine ounces, it goes to 412, okay? And nine through, I think it is 12, is the same. Let's try 12. Yep, still four. Now, if I go to 13 to 16, now it's 527, okay? So there's breaks about every four ounces, and then, of course, 16 ounces, that's gonna be up to the pound. And then you wanna, you're gonna go priority. So your best bet on priority, if you're doing that, Let's just say it was a pound. I'm gonna change this. Yeah, make it one pound, one ounce. Oh, it won't, it shouldn't stay first class. Oh, it went to, it diverted to medium mail. All right, so it knows it's not first class anymore. So now, we're gonna compare. So if I went priority flat rate, it's 718. Um, and you're gonna compare these prices to get an idea of which way it is the best way to go. This would fit in a flat rate envelope if it weighed over a pound. And you can see a regional A would be 809 and that's up to a couple of pounds, or uh, two pounds or more is kind of where that's ideal. Then uh, a B, and then you get other uh, competitors uh, there's your medium flat rate box, um, ground, FedEx, and UPS, or uh, 
yeah, USPS, I mean UPS, I'm sorry. And um, then you have carrier packaging, and these are just USPS uh, priority products. And you can see here that the best option, if you can fit it, would be the, the flat rate cardboard envelope that USPS provides you for free. Now, the padded envelope would be 776, and that's a popular one as well. I use that one quite a bit. Um, and you can see the comparisons. So on the priority products, you wanna come over to the carrier packaging and pick your best option if it goes over the pound. But under the, uh, since this one's only seven ounces. And what you wanna do when you're, when you're first doing this is weigh your product <clears throat> prior to and do the measurements of what it's gonna be. And then that way you'll have an idea of uh, of what, what it's going to go, and that's what you'll put in your listing for the customer to know that it's paid unless you do free shipping. I do not do free shipping on a lot of items uh, unless I have a huge profit in it um, where I don't mind eating it. So there you go. I hope this helped you. Um, if it doesn't, let me know, and I will be glad to cover whatever topic you want me to cover. I'm sorry the video is a little long, but I'm trying to help folks in whatever you want to see. I'm going to show. And uh, there you go. I'll, uh, I had, um, at the end of the day, I'm going to give you those numbers. I had nine sales. Here's my cost of goods. Here's my total sales. And here's my profit. I'll take it. I'll take it. So I've got to try to get my daughter a car today, and then I'm going to work on listing the rest of the day. Y'all have a great day, and the Cap Guy and JT, we will talk to you again tomorrow, as we always do. Have a great day, folks.